Okay, we're going to talk about holding the horn. Um, the horn is, uh, can be kind of a difficult instrument to work with with younger students because it's one of the, stu it's one of the instruments where the student's size uh, greatly affects how the instrument is held, uh, particularly short students or beginners, very young students that are smaller, um, have to hold a horn that's in essence the same size as a professional or a student who is well over six feet tall. So the sizes of the instruments pretty much are standard, um, unlike, say, uh, violins, things like that, or even the trumpet, where beginning trumpet students can start on cornet because it's a little shorter. We, this is what we have, um, so we kind of have to work around the instrument itself. The first thing that we're going to talk about is the, the most obvious, which is the left hand. This is most obvious and also the easiest part to figure out. We have three uh, valves here, first, second, and third. Um, almost every horn comes with a pinky ring, and if it's a single horn, which is just in F, you only have three valves. If, if your student has a B-flat horn or a double horn, there's also a trigger. Now, the single horns uh, that don't have the trigger valve will have a ring or a hook, something for the student to put uh, their thumb into for security also. Uh, so that's the left hand of the horn position. It's very uh, straightforward. The right hand position is a little trickier. Um, one reason, because everyone's right hand, in fact, left hand as well, but the right hand, uh, all different shapes and sizes. Um, and we have a, a pretty large area where we could um, put the hand. So the position of the hand in the horn is what we'll talk about first. Um, the shape of the hand going into the bell um, I like to call this the beauty pageant wave, um, or if a student is cupping water, those two ideas will give you good hand uh, shape for the right hand position. You'll notice that all of my fingers are together. There aren't any holes or gaps. My thumb is against the other fingers, and it's in a cupped position. Okay, that's pretty much it. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, in the bell where it goes, one good way to think about it is if this were 12 o'clock and this were the face of a clock. I'm going to have my middle knuckle about 2 o'clock or about 3 o'clock. So when I hold the instrument, my knuckle is going to be on the outside of the bell uh, away from my body. I do not put my hand against the side here or down here or anywhere else. The other good thing that is good to know about this is that it gives me a very relaxed right arm position and a relaxed elbow. So if I take my hand cupping water and I simply place it in the bell. My left hand is here. This is a very relaxed position. My elbows are down. My hands are very comfortable. My hand is cup, cupped and relaxed in the bell. Um, if a student happens to ask you, as actually many people have asked me, well, why do I have to put my hand in the bell? I'll demonstrate to you um, a couple of sounds of good position and bad position. And you, uh, from the podium, will be able to discern something's wrong and um, you know you can get off and actually go behind the horn players because they're facing the bells are facing the other direction and see what's going on in that bell here is uh, just a C major scale with good hand position here is my hand too far out a couple of things that happened my pitch went up I became sharp and my sound was too loud and too bright. So that's your first answer uh, for why we put our hand in the bell. It affects intonation and it affects the tone color. Um, this is my hand too far in the bell. Now very clearly I went quite flat uh, because I'm covering where the air comes out. But also my sound was very muffled and small and it just wasn't a nice big rich open sound. That's probably the more co common of the two, is the hand too far in, and sort of a stuffy tone quality. Uh, so that's something that you want to listen for. You want to listen for the sound, but also walk around and see that the hand is in, in a good shape. Um, ideally, the student shouldn't have any pain. Uh, it's, the older kids, the bigger kids that um, have the arm strength to lift it up, I encourage students to play with the horn up off the knee most of the time. Uh, this is uh, another whole can of worms that we will get to in just a moment involving uh, the posture, whether we play on the knee when we're sitting or off the knee. 
Um, so we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, but first, I'd like to um, demonstrate how to begin the proper setup and holding the horn with a student that I have here today. So he is, um, we're going to pretend like I've just handed him a horn for the first time and he's never played one before. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is put his left hand in the proper place and then I'm going to teach him the good right hand position and I'm going to help him figure out where in the bell that is. Once again, muscle memory so that he is actually able to identify, oh yes, I remember that's where she or the teacher put, put my hand. And then we're going to put it up and we're going to put it on his knee. Now this is still um, very bad posture, so I'm going to go through various parts of um, the relationship of the horn to the body and body awareness, that's what I like to call it, and how to hold the horn. Um, we're, first thing we're going to do is have our student put our feet flat on the floor, and I, that's pretty common for all instruments. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is before we even put it up to our face and try to figure out how to play it, we're going to get the body in good body awareness, good posture, despite the horn, or even without the horn. So I'm going to have my students sit up nice and straight, shoulders relaxed, head very tall and relaxed. Okay, good. Now I'm going to have my student slouch. Uh, his name is David. Just completely slouch to the back of your chair. This is the way a lot of kids look today. Um, and when I say sit up and go to a good posture, everything becomes nice and tall feet flat on the floor. Now when we bring the horn to the body, all we do is lift it and put it up like we're playing it. Now one very common thing that you might see are the elbows too far apart. Now when the students bring the horn up to their face, it's very good to know that you don't have to use the elbows to play the horn. You can bring it up simply relaxed. David, do that for us. He's not using any extra energy bringing the horn up. All he's doing is lifting it to his face. Okay, now I'm going to ask David. You can see here that he's got the, the, the bell off the knee. David, why don't you put the bell on the knee? Okay. Good. Now one problem, one problem that you might have is that the student is too tall. We'll deal with students that are too tall. David is too tall to be playing with his horn on his knee. So there's a couple things that you can do uh, if the student is not ready to lift off the knee, you can have the student slide to the back of the chair or slide further back in his chair, so slide further back. Immediately, this is going to, not all the way back though, we're still going to sit up straight. This is going to bring the horn a little bit taller. You can also take the, the right leg and swing it out to the side just a little bit, and that helps affect the height of the instrument. Now, let's, if we were to pretend that the mouthpiece was too high, I could simply say, David, drop your knee lower on the floor. That's it, and that will drop the horn a little bit. So raising the, the right knee um, on how you swing your leg out uh, around the chair will help affect the height of the instrument. Now this is assuming that we're playing on the leg. Okay, now scoot all the way out to the edge of your chair. If you had a student that was even taller, and put the horn back up on your leg, and it was, he was even taller than David and needed that horn to be um, even lower then we can have a student slide all the way out. We can have the student slide all the way back in the chair. So sliding around in the chair will also affect the height of the horn in relationship to, to, the, uh, to the student. So um, if, if David were uh, needed to have the horn lower on his face, if he were a shorter student, having him all the way at the very front of the chair, you can see that this significantly drops the lead pipe in the mouthpiece in relationship to where he is. Still on the knee. Okay, slide all the way back. Just put it still up on your knee. Once again, you can see how much higher the horn is now. So playing around with where the student is in the chair helps affect the height of the instrument. Um, if you have a student who is very little and the horn is excessively heavy and they're having trouble with that right hand position, I, I encourage you to have the student, just while they're beginners, hold the horn this way. Now, we, we want to set up the goal of having the hand in the right position, but if it's just too heavy, and just too big and unwieldy for them, um, then I think it's okay to say, you know what, hold, hold the horn wherever you can. Manage the best you can. When they're that young, they're still working on embouchure, air, tone production, where their hand is probably not going to make a huge difference at that level. And as they grow through junior high and high school, 
you can have them slowly adjust into good posture with a good right hand and the good hand position, finding as they grow, because they're still growing, where the horn can be most uh, suitable in relationship to the body, always keeping in mind we want the mouthpiece and the lead pipe to relate to the, the embouchure correctly, and we want to accommodate good air. Okay, with that in mind, I'm going to ask David to sit in a position that demonstrates probably the number one bad posture that I see with students coming in. And this might very well be something that you recognize too. First of all, we see that the student is slouching to the back of the chair. Another problem that I see a lot in beginning horn players is the horn uh, relating to the body so that their head is tilted to the side. Most of that comes from the horn being on the knee and them having to move to the horn. We need to be able to bring the horn to us. So the first thing that I always do is get rid of the horn. And then I fix what I see in the chair. So we're going to move to the outside of the chair. We're going to put our feet flat on the floor. We're going to have a very straight back and very relaxed shoulders. And we're going to center our head with the front of the room or ideally with the band director or the music stand, our music, what we're looking at. Then we're going to hand the instrument to the student. This is how I would fix posture problems. We've already taught left hand position, so they should remember that. And we've taught right hand position, and they should remember that. Now, David is tall enough to hold the horn off his knee, so he should. And he keeps his elbows relaxed. Because he's not using his knee, he's able to center his head and keep everything straight. So now put your horn into a relaxed position, and then bring it back up. The only thing that he's moving are his arms to bring the horn to himself. Now, David, show us um, how you would play if the horn was on your leg, maintaining good posture. Yes, he needs to scoot back because he's tall. He wants to keep his lower back straight. Good. That's better. That's pretty good. Okay, so those are a couple of ideas in dealing with um, how to get the instrument related to the body. Now the next thing we need to do is actually get a sound on the instrument. So what I would like to show you is um, before I actually have a student play the horn, if we are still assuming this is the first time they've experienced the horn, is I will take that mouthpiece and I'll place it on their embouchure where I think it ought to go so that the first time they feel contact with the mouthpiece on their face is what they remember when they get home to practice. Oh yes, I remember the mouthpiece was put here, not too high, not too low. They remember the first experience the best. So we're going to put our horn in a relaxed position. I'm going to take the mouthpiece, and I'm going to instruct David to make the M and the P and just blow air. M. The proper embouchure and setup without the mouthpiece. So I'm going to take the mouthpiece. And I'm going to put it two-thirds upper, one-third lower. And then I'm going to ask David to take the mouthpiece from me, holding it onto his embouchure. And then I'm going to say, just take a couple of breaths in and breathe out. Get used to how that feels. In. One more time. Then I'll have David remove the mouthpiece. Now see if you can recreate what I did. Once again, inhale. Chances are the memory of where I put the mouthpiece uh, will stick better if it was done for the student and they remember where it was placed rather than fishing around trying to find out where they need to put it by, them, by themselves. Okay, then we'll put the mouthpiece back in the instrument. We've shown them to put it in, give it a good quarter turn. We will resume our good posture, good hand position. We bring the instrument up. We take a good breath and we play a long note, any note you'd like. Good. Take a big breath, do it again. 